Okay, so I've got the shell of the building set out, and now, looking at the fa facade there, you can see that maybe the next most important element after these piers and the walls to establish that facade is going to be the openings. Uh, and so that'll be principally these windows, but maybe some doors and other things on the lower level. And if you look in the, the library, the Levitt library, you'll find that you probably won't find a window that's exactly like that. And even if you can find one that's, that's the same or similar, uh, it may not work as well as, uh, as you need it to. And so it's a good thing to know how to make one of these. And uh, it's a fairly simple window, so uh, hopefully you won't have too, too much trouble uh, making a Revit family of your own uh, for this window from scratch. And that's what I'm going to show you. So back into Revit, I'm going to make a new file going to the main menu. And then this time making sure I click on the arrow or just hover to bring out the sub-menu and then family. And if you haven't seen this before, this is the list of family templates. And you'll see at the bottom you should have metric window. Not met metric window with trim or metric window curtain wall, just metric window. Double click. And you'll see a wall with a hole in it. So that's obviously been set up for you to make a window. And if you look at the 3D view, so under 3D views, you'll just have one view called view one. And if you open that, you'll see the opening cutting through the wall in 3D. And before I make anything, I'm just gonna show you that the opening is an object. So as I move the cursor there, you can see that it's highlighting the opening. But if it doesn't come up automatically for you, you can use tab while you've got the cursor on the edge there to cycle through and then get the opening. So it's important that you realise the opening is an object that can be deleted. And also, it's already associated with the parameters that have been set up for us. So on the uh, ribbon up the top there, you can see in the properties panel, there's a button called family types. And this really is the most important dialog box you use when you're working in a family, in a family file particularly. So I'll show you it once more because it's so important. Again, in the properties panel, which will come up whether you're on the modify tab or the create tab, you'll see that panel stays there. And it's the button bottom right in that group of four. So family types. And then we can again see the parameters. And so there are only, uh, so there are three that have been set up for us, or three important ones. So we've got the height and the width, and then down below we've got the seal. So you don't need to make those parameters, they've already been made for you. And, oh, and so again, I'll, I'll open that up, yep, sure. Yep, sure. Oh, okay, so the sill, yeah, it's a good question. So the, the sill height is the height from the floor to the bottom of the window. Uh, and then the height is the height from the sill to the top of the window. Uh, so that's the height of the window itself. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to leave the sill height now. Notice it says default sill height. When you see that word default, it means the parameter uh, works differently to the others. So I'm going to just focus on the width and the height to begin with. And I'm going to change the width there to something else. So I'm going to change that to 1500 and then click apply and we can see that value changes in the model. I'm going to go and change the height to something else as well, 1800 we'll try. Apply and that's working as well. So I'll click OK and then we'll have a look at the window there and so you can see uh, in the photo here as well We've got the brick courses, which give us a good uh, measuring rod to work out the size of that overall window. And also you can see the brick courses across, so we can use the bricks in both directions. And I actually might go here just because I can see inside. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so I'm going to say it's about 26 bricks. 
we don't need to be precise because this is just a rough value to, to get started and we can come back and adjust it. So I'm bringing up my calculator and uh, what did I say, 26 times, oh that's the other way, yep, so that's right when we go the other way definitely, but when you're going up, 76 exactly, plus 10 for mortar, so 86 or 85, but we'll do 86. Okay, so 2236, let's say 2200 is close enough, and you'll see why I don't need to be that exact in a minute. So again, 2200 is the height, and then the other way, oh, that's definitely where the other photo will be better. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay, so 16 times, what's the size the other way? Exactly, 230, but again, plus 10 for mortar, so 240. So 3840, so let's say 3800. Okay, so now I'm going to back in Revit, go to family types again, and try to use those values. So 2200 was the height, whoops, and the width was 3800. I'm going to press apply, and we've got a problem. So you can see the wall isn't big enough for that opening. It's not really a problem because all I need to do now is go back and select that wall and I can use the grips down the bottom to extend it. It's just big enough for that width but I'm going to make it bigger anyway just so that I've got a bit more room to play with. And then you can see at the top there's an arrow and you can just stretch that up. This wall is really just there as a placeholder for something uh, or to have something for the window to go into. It's not going to make any difference to your project when you adjust this wall. So you can make that wall any size you like. And you just generally want to make sure it's big enough for the biggest size you'll need. So that's why I've established that size before I go and uh, do some modelling, which is the next step. So I think I mentioned to you that you can do um, the, the frame in different ways and you will see people do the the whole frame with a sweep and a lot of the families in the library are made that way. It's not my personal preference, uh, partly because I just think it's overkill when you look at the Create tab. All these different solid modelling tools have their purpose, but extrusion is by far the most important and, uh, and again, building products tend to all be made, or n not all, but the vast, vast majority of building products are made simply using extrusions, whether they're plastic extrusions, metal extrusions, uh, or timber that's been cut out to a profile. So try to use extrusions as much as you can and see how far you can push that one before trying to use these other solid modeling tools, which are harder to work with and also harder to adjust. The other issue is that often the sizes need to be different anyway. So the side of the frame there, which is you know what that, that piece is called there? Uh, so the side, the, very, the piece of timber right up against the wall. I'll zoom in so, so you can see it. Exactly, window jam, same as in a door. So you've got a window jam either side and the window head is, uh, is probably the same size but the window sill is definitely a different size. You can see that pretty clearly. So I'm going to make each piece as a separate extrusion. And I'll start with the jams in the floor plan. I'm going to make a, again, an extrusion. And I'm going to draw a rectangle. So, again, in the draw panel, I've clicked the rectangle button. And now I'm going to click a point on the uh, the edge of the wall opening. So you can see there, just getting that um, reference plane to be highlighted. If I click and then I'll bring it up and to the right and just click another point so that it's crossing over the centre line. I don't care about the size because I'm going to do that afterwards. Right click and cancel. 
So this is where it gets interesting, I think. This is where you put in the constraints and that sets things up to work with your parameters. So the first constraint is to lock this side to the wall. We always want the window jam to sit up against the wall. So I'm going to go to the align tool in the modify panel. It's the first of the big buttons, I'm sure you all know. And then I'm going to highlight not the edge of the wall, but the reference plane. So that's a really good um, rule to remember when you're making families. If you can lock it something to a reference plane, use that in um, preference to a an object like a wall. So I could lock it to this. To show you, I could lock it to that wall, but the wall is actually locked to the reference plane already. So we're creating the potential for a circular chain of references if we lock it to the wall. But if we lock it to the reference plane, the reference plane is controlling everything. So that's a direct link to the controller. So I'm going to lock it to that by selecting the reference plane first and then highlighting the edge of my uh, sketch or my extrusion. And then I'll get the, the little padlock, which I can click to lock. So now that side's locked to the reference plane. That's what we're here. So maybe just think logically about what would be the next thing we need to think about. Well, there are a few things, but you might be thinking of the, the side here before the top and the bottom. We'll do the top and the bottom last or afterwards. So the side here on the right now needs to be established. We've locked this side to the wall. So when the wall moves, it's going to move with it. But then we want this object or this line or edge of the window jam to stay a certain distance from the wall whenever the wall moves. So we've got to establish that using a dimension. So I'm going to, I'll just draw in a dimension using the align dimension tool which you have on the uh, modify panel there. You can just click on that dimension button under your ruler. Again, starting with the reference plane, not the wall, so on the reference plane first and then I'm going to click on the um, the line there and then I can place that dimension above. So how big do you think a window gem would be? I'm looking at this, this piece of timber here. 30, 40? So, so? Yeah, something like that. It could be less. In reality, it might even be 25, but I'll say 30 or 35. Okay, so I'm going to select that line and then come up here to change the number. So 35. Okay, so just so that's clear, you don't select the dimension to change the dimension. You select the object, in, in this case the line, and then the number goes blue to show you that you can adjust it. But now, after I've made that 35, I want to select that dimension object so that I can get the option to lock it. So down here you can see there's a padlock. You might need to zoom out to find it, but you'll always find one when you select a dimension like this. There'll be a locking option. So now, with that locked, it'll always be 35. Now, later you might think, I want to have window jams that can have a different size. And so we could make this an adjustable number instead. Instead of being always 35, we can make that adjustable. But for now, we'll just have it as a fixed dimension, in which, in which case, again, you can lock it. OK, so maybe just thinking about the plan, don't think about the height or anything. What else do you think we need to establish before we finish this? Exactly, exactly. So we need to set the width or the depth away from the wall which is essentially establishing this edge and this edge where they live or where, they, where they're going to stay. So again, it could be adjustable. We could make it so that it's a changeable number, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to make it a fixed number using the align dimension tool again. And I'm going to start with the top and then I'm going to go to this reference plane in the center and then I'm going to go to the bottom and then I'm going to place it over to one side. Put it here. Put it here. 
Okay, so that's done. And I can see I've got then the padlocks, but also notice how you've got this equals option. So I'm going to click on that just to make sure they're equal. But then I'm going to turn it off. Yep, it, it might already be equal, but uh, again, it doesn't hurt just to, to make sure. So I've turned it off so that I can then afterwards change the numbers because just so it's clear. When it's equals, you won't see the numbers there. So I've made it equals, and then I'm turning it off so I can see the numbers again. Notice how the numbers are hard to read because we're working with fairly small things here. So a good option there is to change the scale while you're doing this maybe to 1 to 5. And there we go, how much easier is that to read? So I've got it 40 and 40. I want this to be 100 mil deep, so I'm going to select the line at the top and I can change this number over here to 50. And I'll select the line at the bottom, change it to 50. So altogether that's 100. So now how do I make that number stick? Exactly. Exactly. So if I select the dimension, now I'll get the lock symbols up again. So that means no matter what, this line and this line are going to be 50 mil either side of the centre of the wall. Oh, okay. So are you getting the, the numbers in blue? Oh, yeah. So you've got to select the line, not the dimension. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll come over and have a look. I'm just going to do the, the, the frame and then I'll, I'll check it. This won't take much longer. So, okay, so I've got that, um, that side done in plan. But now I need to think about the, the height. So I'll show you the 3D view and you can see that, again, I've just drawn the plan or the profile of that shape. And what I'm going to do to set the height is finish it just by clicking the tick box there. Mm, sorry, not tick box, the tick button. And notice how I can see all these arrows, but I can't see the object because it's inside the wall. Uh, I can still, though, if I'm careful, use the arrows to drag it. So I'll show you, if you accidentally click or do something, you can easily go to wireframe and see through the wall to find that object again. So all I'm going to do then is select it and click and drag to bring that up and snap to the top of my window opening. So notice how as I drag, it comes up with a little um, surface at the top there. And again, I get the lock symbol, so I can lock it. And then again with that object selected, I'll get the arrow from the bottom and click and drag until it snaps to the sill. Exactly. Yeah. And again, I'll lock it. So I'll give you a chance to get that far, and I'll do the next part in another video. So you can see there, that is the right-hand side, which might seem like a lot of work just to do a box. But what I'm going to do just before I finish is go into family types again, and now change these numbers. So the height, I'll change to, let's say, 1500. Apply. Why isn't that changing? So, let's change this to something else. So, 1000. There we go. Okay, so notice how it moves as I change these numbers. I don't know why the height's not working. Okay, something going wrong with the height there. But I'll, I'll come back and fix that in a minute. But uh, the width you can see is working. The height should be working for most of you as well. I think there's just an issue with the... Um, Oh yeah, here we go. So the openings become unlocked from the height and I'll, uh, I'll show you how to fix that afterwards.